right, so here I am at the uh, Queen's Hotel on Skelders Gate in York. Um, it's one of those hell hotels where they have uh, guest rooms uh, where you're permitted to smoke. I reserved this room earlier, back home in Batley. Uh, phoned up the hotel and quoted a rate which I'd seen on a, a website called Smokers United. Smokersunited.com, a, a website dedicated to helping people, providing information for smokers as to hotels where they can stay and they can smoke, uh, restaurants which have smoking facilities, I think airports which have smoking facilities as well, throughout the world. Um, and I'd seen uh, rooms advertised on uh, smoking, uh, smokersunited.com, advertised at, uh, I think it was £48. Uh, so I quoted that rate. And the lass on the reception uh, on the other end of the line said, ah, well, if you're, if you're booking direct with us uh, at the hotel, then uh, the rate is £66. Seems a bit odd, that, doesn't it? So, uh, any road. I were in a rush, so I paid £66. I made a reservation, uh, pre-authorisation on my debit card. My sister was at my mum and dad's. My sister lives in Selby, which is sort of on the way to York. So she dropped me off at a shopping centre just outside York and then I got a taxi into York. Um, to all my American fans, <laughs> you might have heard of York. It's, I think York's a bit overrated. I don't mean that with any disrespect. It's the capital of my county. Um, it's the old traditional capital uh, of, uh, of Yorkshire, obviously. I just think it's a little bit overrated, you know, there's a big minster here, a big cathedral and uh, some nice old buildings, but, you know, I've been to other places in Europe, I've been to other places in England, which I, I, I think are, are just a bit more interesting. Uh, York's a bit too commercial for me and, it, yeah, like I say, apart from uh, a nice cathedral and a few nice buildings, I don't think it's old special really. But there was uh, a Narcotics Anonymous meeting uh, here in York tonight, which I went along to. Unfortunately, um, there was no one there when I turned up. So I phoned uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, lovely, uh, lovely uh, transvestite called Martina, who lives near York. Uh, I first met her over in Manchester at a Narcotics Anonymous meeting and asked her for advice. She says, well, Max, she says, I'm awfully sorry. She says, I'm awfully sorry there's no one there for you. She says, get yourself round the corner to where uh, there's an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. Um, so I wandered round there. I was late, but anyway, I managed to uh, get something off my chest, share something with uh, the other lovely people who were there. There were some nice people there tonight. And um, then I've just come back to the hotel now, wearing uh, a pair of Nike. Air Max lights, which I bought today in size, where I got the uh, Air Max lights from yesterday, the red ones, the red and white ones. Um, the ones I got yesterday were £105, these were £90. Uh, the difference in price reflects, uh, there's a slight difference in weight, these are slightly heavier than the ones I got yesterday. The tongue is slightly different, there's more uh, nodules on the tongue. And apparently, according to the lovely sales assistant in size, they use different materials, um, lighter materials, on the ones I got yesterday. And they're, they're a bit more comfortable. Uh, do like this colourway. Uh, the sort of luminous uh, green on the apron. And then a, a darker pea green on the sides. Bits of black on. Um, I, as usual, the green, bits of black on, and I like them. <coughs> I'm just a teeny weeny bit annoyed about this hotel. Let me get up close now, eh? Let me get up close. It's funny, I don't know whether I've shared this before on a video. Years ago, I read a review of a book uh, that was written by a, a guy who freely admitted that he had a mundane office job. Uh, and the story is that 
fucking story is, he was sat one night on the settee with his wife, eating a box of chocolates. And uh, the chocolates were made by a Danish company. And um, it said on the side of the box of chocolates, if you are not 100% satisfied with, the, with these chocolates, please write and let us know. And he was sat there thinking, and he says to himself, I'm not 100% satisfied with these chocolates. There are some chocolates in this box that I don't like. And to be a bit more philosophical, he was saying to himself, actually, there's nothing in life that I'm 100% satisfied with. I'm never 100% satisfied with anything. So I've always got cause to complain. So he writes a letter to this uh, Danish company that makes the uh, box of chocolates. And uh, he says he's not satisfied. And he says that uh, if um, by return of letter, he still isn't satisfied, then he will chain himself to the railings of the Danish Embassy in London to continue his protest. And this Danish company sent him loads and loads and loads of chocolates. Um, and the, the inspiration from the book came from that evening sat on the sofa with his wife eating this box of chocolates. And the book is just a, a series of letters and responses uh, from people uh, with this guy complaining with his philosophy being that you're never 100% satisfied with anything. I never actually bought the book, I just read this review. Uh, it was in the uh, book review section of the Sunday Times and it was about, it's, it's over 15 years ago now, but it's something I, I really do remember. Um, and I'm saying to myself now, what am I not 100% satisfied with in this hotel room? You've probably guessed already <laughs> that there's something that's really bugging me. It's funny, when I first arrived here, when I, when I checked in, the, uh, the doors open with a uh, credit card key that you slide on a mechanism on the uh, front of the door. And I tried it a few times and I just couldn't get it to work. And this red light kept popping on and the door wouldn't open. So I went down to the reception and uh, a guy who was obviously not too pleased to see me when I explained to him that uh, the keys didn't work, came up and then showed me. Apparently what you have to do is slide it down rather quickly and then pull it out. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, why don't you just get a key operating mechanism that is, for want of a better word, foolproof. Yeah, so that no matter how fast you put it in, no matter how quickly you pull it out, as long as that strip on your card touches a part of that mechanism that recognises that strip, it will open the door. Yeah. So there's no messing around. You don't have to put it, uh, slide it down at a certain speed and pull it out um, straight away. You know what I mean? Just get a mechanism that as long as that strip on that card touches a part of that mechanism that recognises that strip, it will open the door. So that's my first little gripe, yeah? And what you're probably saying to yourself is really bugging me now is that buzz in the background. I didn't notice it when I first checked in. I checked in, eventually got into the room, had a wee wee, and then went back out to this uh, to this NA meeting and eventually turned up at the AA meeting. I've been back now about 10 or 15 minutes and I noticed it as soon as I came in. I wondered what it was. And it's the fuse box and it's just buzzing. Now the electricity in the room is operated by putting another one of these credit card type keys into a slot. So if I take the key out of the slot and turn the electricity off, the buzz stops. And the only light is coming from my laptop and it's just gone off again. So, I was tempted to phone reception uh, as soon as I noticed it, but I thought what I'll do is I'll make a film first just to uh, have a record of uh, that buzzing annoyance. Um, let's give you a tour of the room, shall I? 
So I've paid 66 quid for this. It's a smoking room with a double bed. Quite roomy actually, with an ensuite bathroom. Um, the hotel is next to the river. The river ooze uh, in York, and apparently the hotel gets flooded a lot. <laughs> um, fortunately, the river's quite low tonight. Uh, but you never know, things can change in uh, a matter of hours. Let's give you a quick tour then. So that's your bed. Got uh, a table over in the corner. Quite a bit of room there, although we've got uh, your eaves and the... Uh, Velux window. Which points out onto a street below. Not really much of a view. We're on the third floor here. Third floor of three. You've got free Wi-Fi. Coffee making facilities. Have a quick peek into my bag. I brought some skin gear. I'll, uh, I might do you a nice little film later on. There's the uh, offending fuse box. A uh, bit of a wardrobe space. It is nice and clean. Uh, complaint number three. Look at that chuffing thing in bathroom door. Somebody's punched that. Into the bathroom, we've got a uh, bath shower, and toiletries. There. there you go, you've seen a bath and a, and a shower before, and a rubber mat with suckers on. But yeah, look at that. It can't come if you want it to the side. Christ, look at that. <coughs> We've got a flat screen telly. It's funny. I was in the um, I was in the uh, Cosmopolitan in Leeds last night, and I've been in a in a room in uh, the Cosmopolitan uh, with a flat screen telly. But last night I was in uh, a room I hadn't been in before, and there was this great big bloody bulky thing. I thought, Christ, get your act together and get to a nice flat screen telly in uh, in each room. So yeah, so I'll give them a buzz downstairs on reception, see what they say about that buzz. And it's a cold wet Tuesday night in January, but uh, I'll see what York has to offer. <laughs> Wish me luck. Thanks for watching, catch up with you soon.